Friday, October the 9th. In the city of Noctua, the cold wind of indifference froze our hearts and the tears from the porches and the dividing walls of the city. Words have been written, addressed to me. A letter from Mr. Roman, a great friend of my father. In the past, they fought together against the Strapos family and the Romsky Brigade. But since my father died, I haven't heard much of Mr. Roman. There were 99 days exactly since the night of the skin wolf. But that's another story. I met Miss Roman, who apologized for the absence of communication since my father's death, but he expected time could soothe the pain. And then Mr. Roman interrupted his speech, and for a brief moment, the silence could tell. Something bad had happened. Another curtain of blackness had been brought to this man's life. His daughter had been murdered. I knew Aisha. I used to look at her, practicing, dancing, graceful. She was a painting in my canvas of memories. I also knew her brother. He was an orphan adopted by Mr. Roman and never spoke a word. Mute. He was found wandering in the streets of Noctua in a cold winter of 74 and Mr. Roman took him as his son. I asked Mr. Roman what could I do to help him. Mr. Roman started talking about this organization, Equus Caballus, and the myth. These were human-shaped spirits stolen from the world of the living and to whom were given mythological horse names. They were lost souls wandering in quest for revenge, searching for vengeance. Their hearts were black and made of stone. They were destined to take nine lives each before they could finally become human and complete their vengeance. To fight the spirits, ghosts of the underworld, I had to have mythological horsemen as well, so I could fight them in the same level, the Erzas as they call it. I would have to travel north, and each 17 miles there would be a city next to a forest with the same name. In that forest I would have to shout the name of the spirit three times and introduce myself. And once the spirit appears, I would have to shoot him in the chest with wooden bullets made of a rotten coffin. I would only get back to the world of the living with victory. And the spirit would sleep for five days, so then he'd wake up in the other world, aching with revenge in his heart of stone and harmless to complete vengeance in a state they call Slepcha. For each spirit, I would have to send Mr. Roman a card with the name of the spirit and a decapitated rose in a wood box. Mr. Roman asked me if I was willing to take the risk. I accepted. I slept for two hours before the sunset could tell me when to leave. I was on the road. In 70 miles, I could only listen to the waving trees seducing the wind to penetrate the forest. And the road reminding me of the division, this thin line that defines the reaction, becomes a fraction crafted in time. The moments you spend regretting the silver smile on the soft skin of the arrow-shaped balloon leaving tower the shadows in the sky. After the city, I reached the forest of Qualiazzo. Silent, only the wind. Courage, courage. Kilaros, I said three times. Mares of Diomedes. I introduced myself. A weeping lady called Log tries to find balance, and even with the razor hanging, takes his time to unfurl the blow in the virgin flesh. Weapons with the shape of numbers, the art will divide flesh and bone, scar and wound upon the string, a fearful force following every motion, every movement of the creature, waiting for the color in the picture to tell me when. Mr. Roman received the wood box. Kilaros was the first. Strange ways that lead us to fate. That city, thousand miles from here, or right on the corner. The black sign in the door may tell us when to come in, to make a step or to follow the light. In broken sleep, closed gate only opening to reveal our true ambitions. Next stop, village of Ramskar. After the lake, three times I said, Podarkis, Podarkis, Podarkis. The fast current in the still waters along the blowing wind from the east and the courage of sailors drifting for widows to drown in stormy waters. They will only fear the reflection of the guilty conscience in the blade, but they forgot how beautiful was the swimming landscape, a window with a view to our own weaknesses. It's curious. 
How many miles separate love from vengeance? Is vengeance committed because of love? Could love be self an act of vengeance? Or vengeance an act of love? How many of us leave with a spell, the burden? 70 miles later, the forest of Pratska. Seleni, 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 I shouted. Hypnotize, tell me secrets, so later everyone tells who made you do it. What secrets do you hold? Chains, fragile bricks of broken wood, colored strings holding lenses, circular in shape, circular shapes entertaining, so death can follow. It was late, three o'clock in the morning, and five spirits were waiting, though they didn't know I was coming. 70 miles north, Penske Rocks, the Brogan Forest, Surya, I shouted three times. In my back, I carry freedom, and with it, the ones I hold prisoners, and the schemes which allow me to be free. My music, the whipping melody you are afraid to sing, ancient of the Norman violin, when it gives birth to ancient medicine that can heal the furious, can stop the determined. North, north, I headed north, forest of Lacha. Diaos Pita, the sky father who appears in the shape of a horse. Water that floods the skies, the same water that drowns horses, the silent breed always awaiting to be fed. Maybe greed will wake the dead. Maybe the river runs red. Victory and fate is written in ambitious minds. And only the blade will tell. Only the blade will tell. 17 miles up north. The city and the forest of Mortas. No one knew it enough to tell. Awaiting the twins. Arver and Alsvid. Not only fear to paralyze the movement, but the wind, multiplied by ten, the sound of anticipation had a combined a perfect movement and added the strength, precision, adding courage to love, adding luck to will, adding will to space, and space is my time. I was 17 miles from my last spirit. Once in the forest, I shouted one, two, three times, eight in. Investments, the crow hides defenseless praise in the way to the altar. The dragon hides his tongue in hatred with the shape of a crown. The blood appears dressed as a swan, electric, waving not to recognize the bulk behind his wall. Victory becomes distant. I drove back to the city of Noctua, and two days later I had a call from Sonny. Sonny the Blade Laiga was an ex-boxer, 51 matches, 38 victory by knockout. He was never defeated, except that time in a bar fight where he lost an eye. But even though he sent two fools to meet the angels, he had some connections with the underworld of Noctua. He heard I was taking care of Aisha's assassins, so he wanted to have a word with me. He was on my side. We agreed to meet at Tzfadzi Gaz, a local jazz club close to the bridge of Sarkshaw. I met him, we had a few drinks, and then he told me he knew about Aisha and what I was doing for Mr. Roman, but that the real assassin was still alive. It was Arian her brother. Mr. Roman adopted child. He was part of Equus Caballos and that Aisha was his ninth victim. So now he would become human and have his revenge. Before such an expected revelation, I decided to drink, drink, and think about how I would give Mr. Roman the news. I couldn't sleep. The sun wouldn't let me. He adopted the form of a higher conscience. Wake up, he said. Wake up. I had to tell Mr. Roman. I had to tell him. I met him and I told him. The man was devastating. It was a tragedy after another. How could such amount of suffering fit in one person's heart not to explode? In one moment of fury, he asked me to make justice and handed me the gun. So he asked me for vengeance. I asked him three times if that was his wish. And Roman said, it is. So I went to Parts' dome where Aryan had just become human. And for him I would have to use real bullets. I approached the slipping melody as it became closer to the senses. Trying to keep blackness out of my heart. Observe the portrait that inspired us. The memories kept in mind, inactive, remained solid. The last words you could have spoken will somehow change the life of others. The secrets you couldn't reveal were an excuse to forgive. If the last thought you'll have is trapped in vengeance, you become assassin.